I'm CT. When I'm not busy being Arrow the podcaster, I live in the real world. I mean, everybody has to have a job, right? Mine just happens to be CS, customer service, solutions, relationships, while keeping your team motivated to keep a constant connection with every single person who has chosen to stop into your location today or even tonight. Episode number 104, Fight in the Fast Lane, Shopping Center Fire, and Y3000 Soft Drink. This is CTCS. Transition walk, day number one out of four. Man, stressed out already. Stressed out. Four amazing conversations with directors of Halloween movies and all these people that I haven't even interviewed. A gentleman that was has written a book about living with ghosts. Man, you can't go there with me because I'm going to take it to that level. I'm going to go, oh yeah? Let's compare ghosts. Okay, dude. Uh, going into the game today uh, with, uh, with something that's missing. Uh, you know what retail is like. You know what it's like to be out there in the business world. The anxiety level is up and you're always looking for something to bring you down. And uh, there for a period, uh, back uh, maybe about three, four months ago, Jolly Ranchers were my answer. Oh yeah, those big old tasty Jolly Ranchers. You're supposed to suck on them. Yeah, guess what? I was chomping on them like gum. And I ended up cracking one of my back teeth. So I had surgery this week. It's gone. I mean, they're going to they're gonna put in a new one. But it's a six-month process. Injured at a grocery store. What's the solution now? No more Jolly Ranchers, buddy. Being a broadcaster for four decades, you become very much aware of how you sound. When things are feeling right, when they're not right, I speak in tune. And if I feel like I'm speaking out of tune, then we've got to figure out what's going on mentally. Well, I'm having this missing tooth and I'm going to be at a grocery store. I'm going to be listening to every single word that I'm saying because I don't need to sit here and slur because my stupid tongue is falling through a hole. But it's going to take six months to get this damn thing fixed. You know, we live in this generation where we want things done right now. But man, I'll tell you, I'm going to be listening to this voice and I'm going to be listening to how the words are coming out because this damn tongue, it wants to sit there and slide through that hole. New guy, Bill, here. Um, We had our our friendly, polite thief, I like to call Leroy, uh, came in and I watched him grab a box of wine and shove it down the front of his pants. And we called our manager up front and we're we're trying to get that sorted out. And all of a sudden a fight breaks out in self-checkout. And I've got a probably a 60-year-old man and a 30-year-old man screaming from the tops of their lungs just now. Um, it was all over the last piece of chicken at the Asian bar. Um, it, it escalated from, I'm sorry, old man, first come, first serve, to this guy just stole my wallet. So I guess the question becomes, uh, what do you do in a situation like that? You, you, you've got to determine what's going on and you got to get them out of your store um, because you, just, you can't have people screaming and fighting in the middle of a, of a grocery store. Joe Jonas and his wife are like breaking up, right? They're divorced. Oh, yeah. And, and, and what's Taylor Swift doing? Hanging out. <laughs> what is that all about? What's funny is that she made the Fearless album, supposedly, it's yeah. about Joe Jonas, and yeah. now. I mean, her and Sophie Turner are best friends, so they can all just listen to that Fearless album. Oh, my God. You, you you talk about a full circle there, because when I read that, it was like, oh, of course. And I was like, Sophie and Taylor. I was like, that is hilarious. <laughs> Both of them have the same idea. <laughs> Just got word that there's a fire. There is. I'm on side right now. Fire in the mall at this point in time. You can see the uh, the black smoke coming. It looks like it's down by one of the restaurants. But the fire engines are definitely arriving at this point in time. There's no worse feeling than a co-worker who has refused to come into work. And now we have to place that phone call to ask him, where are you? Uh, you you're supposed to be here 40 minutes ago. And, so, and they're not picking up their phone at all. So all you can do is just leave a message for them. And hope to God that they, you know, they, they get it somehow, somewhere, and they get in here and help out this team. Here's an update on the fire. It was a restaurant behind the mall. The front part of the store is definitely is charred. Uh, so people were thinking, was it going to be a, like a grease fire out in the trash can? No, the front part of the building, the front part of the restaurant. And they're great people, too. They come in here and shop all the time, but it's closed. That we know of, Coca-Cola is the very first uh, soft drink company that has created an AI-delivered soda. This is the Y3000 Coca-Cola, and it is a limited edition. And uh, so we got to try it, man, because that's that's part of the fringe benefits of working at a grocery store, is you get to try the new things. Okay, but I'm ready to take a big sip of it right now. I've heard that it's got, it has, this is what I've heard, it's got kind of a vanilla fruity flavor, but let's find out. Oh, no, no. 
Oh, no, 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 no. No, it tastes like cough syrup. Oh, God. There's not even a fizz to it. Not much of one at all. Mm, not a fan. So we just had a gentleman come through our HBC, Health and Beauty, and he had four bags he brought in with him, and he loaded them up with all kinds of goods. And we, we, we weren't really paying attention. And then uh, one of our associates saw him walk out the side door. And when we looked outside, he was looking over his shoulder back to see if we were checking. So that just confirmed what we pretty much knew he did. Um, so he, he made this big beeline through the parking lot, and, and none of us were going to do anything. He, he made the door, so we let it go there. Um, and I just went outside to do a propane exchange. And I guess he thought we weren't going to do anything. He, he was free. So he ended up, he was sitting up by our propane tanks. And when that guy saw me out there, he started sweating profusely. He stood up and faced away from me. He took his hat off. He kept rubbing his head. I could tell that that guy was so afraid that I was going to approach him about what he took out of the store. And our policy is not to, to pursue. So, um, you know, I, I had a moment where I, I thought about going up there and saying something to him. And then I stopped myself because if it had been anyone else, um, disability or not, I wouldn't say anything to him. So I wasn't going to put myself in that position. But it tug it's tugging at all of our hearts up here because, um, you know, if the guy was still in food or something and he was disabled and needed it, none of us would, would question it. Um, but I think the, the, what we're struggling with right now is this guy's got $100 of uh, dish soap and, and, and bars of soaps and, and, and medical things and um, Flonase, you know, just items that he's probably going to sell to get money for whatever he needs. So it's just one of those situations of, you know, wh where do you draw the line? Have you tried the new Coke yet? No. Well, I, think that, I just did it. Tastes like Jaeger. Ooh. Yeah, it tastes, it's, I mean, there's hardly any fizz to it. It's got that Jaeger kind of a vibe about it. But what would an AI know about what, what we want as a, uh, as a soda? I have no idea. It tastes, tastes just like Jaeger. Are they creating this so they can put alcohol in it, such as Jaeger? I mean, they have to tell you, right? Yeah. I mean, because it was like, I mean, I, I don't taste the vanilla at all. All I know is I about gagged when the wine, because I was expecting like a Coca-Cola flavor. Didn't get it. Up. You don't like it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, what do you like about it? Yeah, I drink a vanilla Coke, so it was like... Yeah, I like vanilla Coke. Yeah, though. vanilla Coke is straight. So I drink this one, and I was really expecting just a normal Coke, because I didn't realize yeah. it was like okay. a flavor flavor. Okay. And then I got this, and I was like, I can't really, like... It's, it's like it tastes so familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just cannot. Wow. Yeah. To me, it tastes like a mixed straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It tastes like a mix of something. I yeah. Know what it is. You know what they say? Life begins at forty, man. So you got one more year before life officially begins for you. So, <laughs> so what's the one thing that you uh, are looking forward to it at the age of thirty-nine? I will. I'm looking to get my own slide. I'm tired of taking care. I got to take care of my mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want to go. Yeah, it's time to live life. Yeah, it is. Every day I got to watch out for her. Mm -hmm. She ain't mm -hmm. live by herself. Yes, yeah, yeah. A gentleman comes into the store and he wants to purchase eighteen hundred dollars worth of gift cards. That's cool. That's cool. We don't have to fill out any paperwork until it's you know two or three thousand dollars, depending on what kind of gift cards you're going to get. But uh, I, we asked the question. Um, that's cool that you want to buy it. Uh, I see that you're using a uh, uh, an ATM card. Uh, I need to see the ID, and the ID needs to match what's on that card. No way, man. I'm not going to do that. No, 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 really, seriously, sir, this, that's, that's exactly what has to happen. $1,800 for gift cards is a lot of money. I need to make sure that the name that's on that ATM card is, is you. And, and he goes, I'm not going to do that. And I said, then I guess this is over. What would you do? That's our first edition of What Would You Do? Do you give it to him or do you play by the rules? Sad news tonight. We've talked about Hector many, many, many times. He's the guy that won the uh, the lottery, the pick three lottery, all that money. And he comes in and, you know, I'm sure we have our moments where he gets a little disappointed because they're not picking his numbers. But uh, just got word that he, uh, he was in a head-on collision. So all my prayers to Hector. Uh, he's fine. He's marked up pretty bad. The... Uh, the airbags got him pretty heavy in the chest. Uh, his son is fine. His son was also in the front seat. Um, we're trying to figure out what's going on with the other car because, from my understanding, it, it was in far worse condition. But praying for my man, Hector, buddy. Praying for my man. 
Transition walk, day number two out of four. I have had a crap day. No, I, let's go ahead and label it that, okay? I mean, the uh, the computer system crashed. I lost two huge interviews. And, uh, you know, and then what the hell. So I hope this is not a representation of what's going to be happening in CS today because, wow, that's what's happened. And, uh, you know, the, the, I think, you know, when you're in terrestrial radio, you're spoiled because you've got engineers around you at all times. But when you've got your own studio, you are the CEO of Me Incorporated. That means you're the engineer, the promoter, the writer, the researcher, the news department. That's why you got to do a transition walk, man. I'm out here to clear my head and heart because CS is right around the corner. I don't know if it was a total brain fart or if it's just something that you don't deal with every day. Somebody comes in to buy um, a uh, white owl and they have a 50 cent piece and you look at it and you look at it and you go, man, it's not as big as the dollar, the dollar coin that we used to have. But then you've got the Susan B. Anthony dollar that's small and you look at it and you just sit there and you you have like this brain fart and you're going... I think it's 50 cents. Is it not 50 cents? And you look at it and you go, I got to get somebody else to help me on this because my mind isn't generating the right amount of money here. It's either a dollar or it's 50 cents. But brain fart? Or is it just because we don't deal with 50 cent pieces that much? Here's a true morale buster for you. Having WBL next to a name of somebody who's supposed to be a major player in the afternoon with you. WBL will be late. My question is, how late? Because we're now two and a half hours into this. How late? And so it, what it does is that when you're stuck in the same place and you're not getting the opportunity to do your own job, all of a sudden it starts getting inside your head. And then remember earlier today I said, I don't want to take my bad day to see us. Well, guess what greeted me here today? Yeah, the continuation. It's got to be my martial arts training, the way that I can get through this store very quickly. Rick, the bartender, was trying to get through a big crowd, 5 o'clock Friday afternoon. I said, just follow me, dude. I'm going to get you through the crowd, but you've got to trust in the direction that I move. Because as a martial artist, I'm able to see far ahead of me and know where the holes are going to be. Because that's what we do. And and we used to train in a way that it's, it was all about circles. Where is your zone? How, how do you know where your zone is going to go? Can you predict it? And do you have enough faith in it? And so we got into the crowd, and he was like, going, I, I would never have moved like that. That that's what I do, man. That's how I get through this store, even when the store is as packed as it is. A gentleman comes in with his haagen vanilla bean, and he says, ice crystals. And I'm going, okay, I get it, because that, we've all been there before when it comes to ice cream, ice crystals. But over three quarters of it is eaten. Wait, wait, wait. I thought there were ice crystals. I thought the ice crystals would have started at the very top. I, I, don't, I don't understand sometimes when people bring things back, so he's going to get a free one. Here's the reason why I'm bothered by the things that we allow to come back. I mean, just a few minutes ago, probably about maybe 35, 40 minutes ago, somebody brought in an entire paper bag full of stuff that they've had for just over a month, month and a half, and, and ended up getting like 75 bucks back. And now with the crystallized ice cream, see, the, what, why it affects me is because twice a year we get these bonus checks, these profit sharing checks. This time around, not so much, not so high at all. And and the thing is, we're busting some serious tail here, but because of the thefts and because of the things that are coming back, it takes away from our profit. There's no way we can end the second day without having some sort of taste test, especially when you're walking back by the meat department and you take note of something. The name is very familiar, but the taste is not. Pringles, street taco. What? Yeah, Pringles Street Taco. We got to do a taste test here. I'm, I'm expecting like a Taco Bell kind of a taco flavor. I mean, what, what would you think? Mmm. Well, it doesn't taste like a Pringle, I'll tell you that. Mmm. It's almost like a Pringles corn chip. I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. Yeah, this, this in a Corona beer? I, th- I think that would really work. No transition walk for day number three. A movie promotion this morning. Have to be up at 6 a.m. after getting home at like 11 o'clock last night. And uh, we're doing Paw Patrol. So uh, the movie theater, uh, probably about maybe 75 to 125 uh, young kids, man. We're doing Paw Patrol. So uh, we'll, we'll get the energy on there. We'll, uh, we'll get some happy pictures and, and uh, hopefully see a very happy movie. But uh, no transition walk today. And then it's straight into CS. So ee, kind of a scary moment for those of us that uh, carry. Uh, our emotions on our sleeves. Apparently, we work for the uncool store. I mean, very, very evident. How are you doing today? 
Good. Keep him busy. All right. That keep coming back. Our store is so uncool. Uh, the woman says so over and over again. You guys are just so uncool for not carrying this product. Because really, every one of your stores should have it. And, and the fact that I have to drive to another store, you guys are just so uncool. Yeah, we're uncool. Uh, she, made it, she made it true. And uh, what she's looking for is a Tide pin. Do you know what a Tide pin is? If you don't, you're uncool. And now another moment of, I don't know what I'm talking about. So our guy in Frozen, he wants to leave. He doesn't like the way he's being treated. He doesn't like the way uh, the, the stuff really just beats the hell out of him. You know, stacking it up and blocking and putting things in, in the Frozen thing. I get it. It's very cold. And he says, yeah, I'm going to have a better job. I'm going to be very happy. And I said, where are you going out in the store? I mean, because, or are you leaving the store? And he goes, uh, I'm, I'm going to go be a stalker. And I, I looked at him. I go, wait, you're complaining about your back hurting in Frozen because you don't like how heavy it is and that it's cold, but you're going to go stalk? I would think that's heavier. I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. Uh, someone returned an open bottle of wine. Actually, it been three quarters drank out of it. So I had about a quarter left. Yeah. And in my head, I was like, man, I know there's a law about this, but I went ahead and did the return. Well, I couldn't find a receipt, and it was right. like $28. So I said, I can't do the return unless I have a receipt. But I was going to do it. And then I Googled the law. And if someone brings in a unopened container of alcohol, you can't take it back because it's like – you're buying alcohol from men. Oh. And that's what the law says. But if it's open, then it's up to our discretion. Which I thought was weird. Yeah. Wow. But because you think it was unopened. Then you can just take it right. back. We do it all the time. Right. But Google the law. That's what it says. I was surprised. Kind of in a really weird way. But it did happen. I bumped heads with a department head tonight. It was all based on how our team, they go home at 6 o'clock. They go home, and, and, and all of a sudden you're left there with only two or three people on the register. And uh, the, the leader goes, well, we got to get somebody on the register. Get, get, I mean, wh what are you doing? And I said, I'm, I'm up here at CS. And, and the comment came out that he says, well, you got to get on the register. And I said, well, you've got to remember to hire people. Oh, shh. <laughs> uh, the radio guy came out in me. It did. That's the radio guy kind of talk. When we say stuff that uh, is meant to offend, but you laugh about it at the end. Yeah, that, yeah, it didn't happen. Transition walk, day number four out of four. Man, I had to get my God on today. My mind, my body, my soul injured. You know, it doesn't matter what job you have. The pressure's on every single person today. It's so heavy and so big that we would rather try to walk away from it or take it out on other people. And, and you know what? I'm not that guy. I ain't going to take it out on anybody. But I'm going to question your ass if you try to take it out on me. So I had to get my God on today. And the big message today was... How did I get here? How did I get here? If you knew how many times I put that thought into my head when I'm on that register or I'm standing there in front of somebody who is lying their ass off to me as to why they're bringing something back, how did I get here? I know the answer. I do. It's written out in my daily writing, in my journals. Because I kept asking God, God, will you please put me in a church? Please, Lord, put me in a church. I mean, I'm going to a church, but I wanted to be a leader in a church. Didn't happen. Then one day, he put me at a grocery store. No, it's, I had a woman, and, and one of the cashiers is new, and she's like, can you show me how to do a check? And so I asked the woman that was shopping if she had an ID. So, because there's information we have to put on the check Absolutely. on her license. Yeah. Yeah. And she goes, no, I don't have it. It was stolen. And so I had that debate in my head of like, we're not supposed to take this check at all. Right, right. Because what if it's stolen? Right. And she's like, I don't know what the big deal is. And I was like, well, if someone stole your book of checks and tried to write them, someone would verify the ID. And if the ID didn't match, your checks would be used. So she doesn't understand about the, about the check. I mean, I mean, in all honesty, I would look at her and say, I'm so sorry. Right. I mean, I, I just, I took it and I didn't want You it. did? <laughs> Look, I made a judgment call. It was, look, it was nineteen dollars, right? Okay. So it wasn't like it was five hundred dollars. It wasn't like she was getting cash back. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and she was an older person. I mean, if it it is what it is. But I mean, what would you have done? You wouldn't have taken. No, it? no, no. What if it was for four ninety five? 
I, I can't. No? I can't. Why? Yeah, because I just because I I don't want to have to sign that piece of paper. You know how I feel when I have to sign that paper. Yeah, but well, I made a call. <laughs> I made what I thought was a smart call. <laughs> We just got word there's a man in aisle number seven right now that is spraying detergent all over people. Oh, Jesus. I'm here on the scene. Uh, yeah, not good. Um, he's out of this aisle, but there is detergent and things all over the floor. We're going to have to shut down this lane. Why he was spraying soap and uh, other things at people in this row, I don't know. But it is a big, wet mess here. It's very slippery as we attempt to clean this up. Um, you know, looking for a positive, always trying to do that. And I would say the positive here, at least it smells good over here in aisle number seven right now. But what a fucking idiot. We all work so closely together that it's almost like having a real brother and a sister because we're standing side by side. We blood, sweat, and tears, and football games, and holidays, and, you know, grunt and grind. We all work together. So when one of us is injured, we feel it. The entire team feels it. And when one of us is having some struggles in their personal life and things happen unexpectedly, the pain is there as well. And uh, I offer my prayer, buddy. I offer my prayer. Uh, I'm just with you and your family. Get well, get well. If you ever want to know what it's really like to be in CS, I, I suggest that you go on a football Sunday and, and be up there in that department and listen to every player that's on that team strategizing as to what they're going to do to make sure that the lines are moving and people get in and out as quickly as possible, but in a very friendly way. But I mean, the one thing we're not doing up there is just sitting around talking. It really is strategizing. Because they're minors, I couldn't record them, but we had five young boys uh, who grabbed the electronic card and they were running through each one of the aisles, knocking things down. We got them out of the store. They come back into the store a second time and they start going over to HBC and throwing things on the ground and of course you know they're filming it they've got their smartphones out there filming everything that's going on they come back in a third time and a fourth time this time around I walked up to them face to face I pulled out the smartphone and I dialed 911 they watched me as I hit 911 didn't move until I hit go ahead and call and when it started ringing, they took off. So, here it is, man. Another edition of What Would You Do? Five times, these, these they're not even young adults. They're kids. Five kids, five boys come in here, because boys will be boys, and they do what they're doing. And now we're stuck cleaning up the mess. What would you do? And that wraps up another edition of CTCS. A quote came to me during the 9 o'clock hour. And the quote was, There comes a time on the fourth day that you're doing this. You're so tired of listening, and you know what? When that goes off, so do your lips. You just don't want to talk. <sighs> Man, I salute all who are in retail. I salute all who are at grocery stores. I salute all who basically serve people at restaurants and everything. We go through some stuff, guys. We go through some stuff, and on the opposite end of it, your body may hurt, but the people you served, they're having a better way of life because you gave them peace of mind.